Hello, it's Kim Jolene with Finding Your Fiji. I'm here doing a reading today for our Sagittarius sign for the month of June 2016. And so this reading will cover for you our um, general aspects for the month of June. We'll talk about career and financial prospects for the month of June, your health, and also give you some advice on your love relationships for the month of June 2016. So let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you that aren't familiar with me, or maybe those that have just watched a, a few of these readings, I am a feng shui expert. I'm also, of course, an intuitive, a psychic, and I am, um, have been a business owner for the last, oh gosh, um, almost 11 years now. Yeah. Uh, so what I offer is much advice that the angels are able to tap into the my experience and my uh, things that have happened for me in my life. And so oftentimes they'll feed me information based on that. And so particularly the feng shui, I'll oftentimes give you tips or advice regarding feng shui or just even kind of the number, meanings of the numbers, that type of thing. And so uh, just know that that is sometimes what comes through in the readings as we go along. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So the ace of air is the first card that we have. And the air cards are all about the depth of emotion. And so, another dot, air cards are all about your head. Um, so this is about what's going on up here, right? The water cards, so the depth of emotion. The next card is a water card, so that's where I got that from. So this is really about um, some new ideas. And sometimes what happens around this with the Ace of Air is when you're beginning something, it's just you've got some challenges. Uh, so sometimes, particularly if you're starting a business, that type of thing, there's some things that are just like, oh my gosh, you know, it's just, there can be some challenges around that, okay? And so just knowing that you do have these brilliant ideas and these inspirations and you're following that is what you are meant to be doing. And part of that is seeing the truth in the situation. And seeing the truth is about feeling it more than anything, more than seeing with your eyes, is feeling it, is what I like to say. So that's the correlation there. It's, a, it's about feeling the truth of what's happening in the situation, okay? And then, um, yeah, I just feel like there's, um, you know, there's some people in the backdrop, in the background, um, that are a little bit jealous of your, um, your light. Uh, and so, you know, that can play out in a couple different ways. If they're, if they're jealous of your light, they may say things that are disparage you, um, or they may also want to glom onto you. So there's a couple different things that can be happening there. So just seeing the truth of what's really happening, that's what the angels are encouraging you about. Okay, so here's our water card. Five of water, this is about the depth of emotion. This is about, you know, typically water cards are sometimes where you might feel more emotional, that type of thing. And um, uh, <laughs> part of what this is about for you is when something what you would deem negative happens in your life. Lots of times you just like whine and cry and just, you know, tell the sad, sad story over and over again. And they're wanting to stop that. Like just because there's so much more to it than that. Um, and there's always something positive. There's always a bright side to everything. There's something that you learn. There's maybe a new person that you met as a result of that. Um, so many different things. And so this card is kind of about, you know, things didn't turn out like you wanted them to. They didn't. Um, and it's okay. So find the positive in it. What did you learn from that situation? So that's, you know, kind of turning um, uh, lemons into lemonade, as they say, right? Okay. And then we have the Four of Fire. And the Fire cards are all about passion and action. And this card came up for... Um, this, I can't recall if this came up for Libra or Scorpio. One of the two. Libra, I think. Uh, and so this is really, the four in feng shui is about family. And, and so I always feel like this card is really about that, that solidarity or that groundedness and that sense of just peace and contentment with your family. And um, 
it is about a happy home life. And um, the other side of that is, you know, on the, on the business side of things, it's about ha something having come to completion. And it's a successful completion. Like it, you know, got done and maybe it wasn't perfect, but you did a good job and, you know, all is well, right? Uh, so it is about completing a project around that. Okay, so let's move into our career and financial aspects for the month of June 2016 for our Sagittarius. Oops, not those two. And that one. Okay. Ooh, I like the color of this card. This is Archangel Raphael, and it's about a healthy lifestyle. Uh, so, you know, you're nothing in business and, you know, can't make money if you're not healthy. And that's what this is really um, wanting you to um, make sure you're getting enough sleep. Make sure you're getting exercise regularly, um, that you're watching your diet, that type of thing. So taking care of you are your biggest, best asset, all right? Your biggest, best asset in your career and in your financial picture world, you are your best asset. So make sure that you are taking the best care of you that you possibly can. So that's what that's really about. And then Raphael is coming in again. So we've got him twice. Um, and it's about breathing. Okay. So Sagittarius, have you been holding your breath? Let's take a breath right now. Um, and this is a nice cleansing breath, breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And you can kind of gather up all that anxiety, any yucky yuckiness that you're feeling, just gather that up in your in-breath and letting it go. Let's do that one more time. Breathe in. So it really doesn't take very much time to breathe. But it brings you into the present moment. It helps you get back into your body. Helps you get out of your head, right? So when you need to make a decision, when you need to take action in your business or in, within your work or related to your finances, breathe. First, breathe. That's going to help you make a lot better decisions. It's going to help you feel calmer. So many good things come from breathing, okay? And then Archangel Gabriel is coming through, and this is the leadership card. And so this is really about you needing to step up uh, and step up as the leader that you are. It's time for you to step into that leadership role. Um, and it's about you guiding others because you have, you have more knowledge and expertise in this area than other people do. Okay, so no matter what it is that you do, you know more than the majority of other people out in the world do about that subject. Okay, so please don't tell me, oh, I don't know anything. I can't be a leader. I can't lead. That's a bunch of baloney right there. Uh, because you, no matter what it is that you do, you have expertise that the majority of the world does not have in that area. Okay, uh, so take advantage of that and um, step up. Step up, step up, step up. All right, so let's see what your health aspects are for the, the month of June. So I'm kind of curious because Archangel Raphael is already talking about taking care of your health here, and now we've got a whole line of cards that are going to be coming, coming in from Archangel Raphael. So he's one of your angels this month. Um, for the month of June, there, Sagittarius uh, is Archangel Raphael. Oops, I need one more. Yeah, so he's harping on the diet, people. Um, he wants you to take a look at what you're eating. What are you putting into your body? Um, is it good stuff or is it processed stuff? Um, because, frankly, things that are processed, it's not even really real food. Okay? Um, so there, he's really pushing you to make good choices. And you can ask him to help eliminate any cravings that you have that are unhealthy. Um, anything that you're wanting um, to eat or drink that isn't good for you, ask Archangel Raphael to come in and help you with those cravings, okay? Your diet is super important, so it's time to take a look at that. And then staying positive is the other piece of it. Your mind affects your body. It just does. You know, if you have uh, somebody that has a really fantastic attitude about being sick, 
and somebody that has just a really, you know, your type attitude about being sick, who do you think is going to get better faster? The positive attitude person is going to get better faster. Uh, that's just, you know, that's just the way it works. Um, when you have those positive thoughts about things and you think about um, rather than the worst thing that could happen, what's the best thing that could happen, right? And getting into that mindset of, you know, it's always working out for you. It's always working out for you. It's always working out for you, right? Okay. And then meditation is coming through for you, Sagittarius. And this is another key to helping still your mind and get you back into, um, into that connection with your higher wisdom. And that higher wisdom has all of the answers for you about your health, about your life, about everything, relationships, everything. And so the more often that you can meditate, um, the better you able, you're able to connect with that higher wisdom that you have, okay? And so meditation, I know for some of you it's hard to just sit still, but dang, once you get used to it, it's so yummy. Like it's so, I so look forward to meditating. Like my body's just like, oh, yay. Like gets so excited uh, when it's time to meditate. You can start by doing a walking meditation where you're outside in nature. You know, no headphones in or anything like that. You're just there. You're just present. Um, anything that you do mindfully can be a meditation. You can wash your dishes and have that be a meditation where you're just fully present right there in that moment where you're breathing. Uh, you could be cooking and that can be a meditation, right? There's so many different things that you can do um, that help you get in your body in the moment, right? Um, even exercise for some of you can be a meditation, right? Um, as long as you're present and aren't like, you know, off in your head somewhere while you're doing it. Okay, <clears throat> so let's move, Sagittarius, to our love relationship aspects for the month of June for 2016. Woohoo, here we go. Here we go, here we go. I feel like we're getting on the top of a roller coaster. Are you ready? Are you ready? We're getting up there, we're getting up there. Ah, we ready to fall? I think you're falling in love. Um, <laughs> let's see. We have the chemistry card. I know, I'm being kind of silly. Uh, we have the chemistry card. So this is really about, um, there are some sparks of flying. That's what I'm seeing for you, Sagittarius. Lots of, um, lots of sparks of flying right there. Uh, so it's a strong attraction that you have with this other person. And this can be someone that you're already with, of course. Of course it can be. And uh, it can also be for those of you that are single, someone that you're going to meet, and you're just going to be like, oh, I really like this person, right? You just feel that attraction. And that's what it should be should be juicy like that. Um, one of the things that may be hindering or getting in the way is um, religious things. So this is religious factors card. And so sometimes if you have different core beliefs, uh, you know, one person, for instance, is very religious and another person is very, you know, more into the spiritual, there can be, you know, it, it can make a relationship difficult. So looking at those core beliefs and what, what do you believe that's the same? You know, what are the commonalities? Rather than looking at the differences all the time, what are the common things? And then letting go, like, you know, everyone's entitled to believe whatever they want. You know, it's not for me to say what you should believe or for you to say what someone else should believe. That's not our job here. It's not our job. Uh, so looking for the commonalities rather than the differences, okay, uh, is what I'm getting around that. And then, um, for many of you out there, you need to release your ex. Um, so that's getting between you and finding a mate, for those of you that are single. And it's also maybe getting in between you and um, your current partner. So here's what happens. When you are in a relationship with someone, um, when you have that you know physical connection, connected relationship with someone, um, you just your cords get entangled. So your cords attach to them, their cords attach to you. Um, and this, if you're with somebody for a period of time, it definitely becomes a habit, habitual to connect to each other, right? Um, 
And what we want to do is we want to make sure that our energy field is clean and clear and that it has only our energy in it. Okay, and so what I'm, they're encouraging me to share with you is about cutting cords with your ex. So what you can do is just visualize, you know, your body. Um, and this is great to do if you have like a particular pain in your body that is just um, coming out of nowhere and you're like, I don't even know I have this pain. Usually that's a cord that's attached. So let's say you have a pain like, you know, I'm going to say just in your shoulder or something like that right here. Um, so what you want to do is visualize, and it doesn't matter if you have a pain or not, you need to release your ex. So what you want to do is visualize like a lightsaber or a machete or some kind of sword, um, just cutting the cords, like really nice clean cut, clean cut all around your whole body and send those back with love and light. You don't even need to know who they all belong to, just send them back with love and light. I like to picture like a little heart at the end of it, sending it back with love and light, right? And then those holes that are left, so for instance if you have a hole left in your shoulder, then fill that with pink light and that will help seal and and heal that um, aspect of you and so you become whole again and your field becomes clear so in these axes may try to reattach again and again just because it's a habit so whenever they're starting to pop into your mind time to cut cords right I always know um, that when I start dreaming about my ex-husband that it's time to cut cords again right um, so that's what I do is just visualize that cutting cords all right so let us finish up we have got a couple extra cards that we are going to look at here um, and we have the star Archangel Jophiel so Jophiel is our feng shui angel um, and I always like to think when she's coming in that it is about um, surrounding yourself with a beautiful environment. In feng shui, a lot of people think, oh, it's just like moving your furniture around. That's not it at all. It's about the energy of your stuff. Okay, so everything has energy. These cards have an energy, and I'm really careful about these cards, let me tell you, and about the energy that they carry, because I only want them to carry my energy and the highest light energy, right? Um, so I'm constantly careful about clearing them and about making sure nobody else touches them too is the other thing. So when I'm doing readings live, I oftentimes have to do a lot of clearing in between readings. If someone has reached out and touched my cards, I'm like, ah, don't do that. That's, you know, it's my energy that's on the card. That's what I want on there. Um, so Jophiel, talking about feng shui, um, take a look at the things that are in your environment. And what does that feel like to you? So when you actually physically pick something up, like when I pick up this rock, you know, what do I feel when I hold this rock in my hand? Um, does it bring me joy? And there's a great book on the life-changing magic of tidying up. If you go to my website, there's a link to it on the products page. Um, but it's by Marie Kondo, and it's about, you know, touching and feeling all of your objects and determining does this spark joy and this little rock does spark joy I love the color it's got kind of like a purple sheen to it it's really nice and smooth and I just love it I love this um, and so those are the kind of things that you want to surround yourself with and if you need any help with feng shui I love to do that for you I'm intuitive obviously I'm doing these readings and so when it comes to your space I can energetically feel the stop signs that are holding you back in your space, the things that are keeping you stuck, the things that are preventing you from moving forward. And that, along with my coaching, is a way that really rockets people out of the position that they're in um, into you know, up-leveling their life, right? Okay, so this is about um, making positive, optimistic plans, right? Um, it is about happy times. It's about being in the flow. And so I feel like as you release the things that are no longer serving you, you're going to be able to get in the flow. And they, she is letting you know that you're on the right path. Okay, Sag? You're on the right path. All right. And then Archangel Zadkiel is coming through with teaching and learning. So I am, I don't know about you, but I'm a lifelong learner. I love, love, love to learn. Uh, and so, you know, it's just something that I continuously do and I'm continuously doing and that helps not only me in my life, but it also help, really helps my clients because then I'm broadening my knowledge base for them and I'm able to give them guidance where they don't have to go and spend the tens of thousands of dollars that I've spent on, you know, personal development and training. You don't have to spend that. You know, you can work with me and get that wealth of experience. And so this is really about keeping an open mind 
and learning some new things, learning some new ideas, that type of thing. And then when you're learning these things, keep in mind, like if you were going to teach it to someone else and then sharing that with someone else. So share your knowledge. That's what this is about, you know, really just taking time to um, not only learn new things, but then share them with others. OK, don't don't make it a best kept secret. All right. And then um, the angels want you to give them your cares. Um, so this is Archangel Raphael. He wants you to come in. He wants to give you to give your cares and worries to the angels. That's not our job. Our job here is not to worry. That is not our job. Our job is to have fun, to explore, to feel emotions, um, to be alive, to be in the flow. That is our job. Worrying is not our job. So go ahead and give that to your angels and guides. And then... Um, Regarding the relationship, so this is a, the last card for the romance deck, and this is um, trust, okay? So trust, and again, this is about trusting um, that the situation re will resolve however um, is in the highest life light for both of you. So whether you stay together or you part ways, um, that the situation is going to be resolved for the highest light and for the highest good, all right? And taking from that the gifts, the things that you have learned um, from that relationship and moving your life forward. All right, Sagittarius, that's what we've got for the month of June 2016. Remember to take some time to relax, really relax, have fun, and enjoy your life. Much love to you. Did you enjoy your angel reading? I'm sure questions have popped up for you about specifics in your own life. To get answers personalized just for you, click below to schedule your appointment. You can use coupon code ANGEL20 to save 20% on any one of my readings. For more information about me and Finding Your Fiji services, go to FindingYourFiji.com. Enjoy your day.